Many growers go through and purchase a drip irrigation system, but a lot of questions arise for how long should I run it? Uh, what drip tape should I purchase? Here on this Debaco University video, we're going to go over some of those calculations to get you over and past that learning curve. All right, let's get into drip irrigation calculations for outdoor cannabis production. So first off, realize that there are many calculations that are possible. So many ways to go about calculating water in regards to drip irrigation. The following that we presented here is generally the suggested process to go through when it comes to planning for your drip irrigation system. Not the only way, but it is at least one way, and I'll walk you through those steps. So first off, step one is determine the drip tape required. So take your plot design, which hopefully you've constructed, and determine the total number of uh, drip tape that you would need. Are you looking at a very small area? Are you looking at a very large area? So for example, if you had 12 rows of plants, each 80 feet long, 12 rows, 80 feet each, you need 960 feet of drip tape. So again, doesn't matter if you're a small operation or a large operation, this calculation still needs to be gone through so you know exactly how much to purchase. Then step part two is to calculate the source of water and your flow rate. So a simple way to calculate this is simply get a five gallon pail and a timer. Turn the water on full, start filling the pail up, and start the timer at the same time. When the pail is full, stop the timer. This will provide you the time it takes to reach five gallons. Take this time and figure out how many gallons per minute you have. You could also do this filled up right to a gallon or two gallons, uh, but kind of get you the idea of that flow rate that you have. So for example, if it takes 23 seconds to fill the pail, 60 seconds, 23, 0.26, 0 0.26 times the five gallons would be 13.04 gallons per minute. If it takes you 72 seconds to fill the pail, and again, this is a five gallon pail, 60 seconds divided by the 72 times it by the five gives you 4.6 gallons per minute. So it's a quick, easy way to calculate and know what your flow rate is. Now, as a word of caution, don't do this right at the source. If you have filters or timers or anything that's going to restrict the flow rate, do this calculation after all of that equipment so you're getting an actual flow rate that's going to go to your drip tapes. Then you want to select the drip tape. So there's a lot of different manufacturers out there, but here we're just going to look at some of the basics, the emitter spacing and flow rate. Eight inch emitter spacing is recommended for sandy soil and um, high density planting. So if you've got a lot of plants in a small area and very sandy soil, that water is going to percolate through very quickly. Eight inches would be recommended in that situation. However, most situations you're looking at 12 inch emitter spacing is considered to be the standard. And we could see some of them listed right here. The flow rate, there's low flow and there's high flow. Low flow is greater for longer run times and allows for more tape to be run uh, as the flow rate is restrictive. So low flow allows you to run more tapes because they're flowing less water. High flow, uh, shorter run times for when flow rates are not restrictive. If you have excessive amount of gallons per minute, you can go with a high flow and reduce your total duration. The plants will still receive the same amount of water. And here we see it calculated flow rate per 100 feet at 8 PSI. You should be running your drip tape with a 10 PSI pressure uh, reducer. And we see the low flow can run 700 feet, high flow 460. So again, if you're a larger operation, sometimes that lower flow might be advantageous. Then the, what, how long or what time does it take to apply um, one inch of water? So here we're looking at time to apply one inch of water in hours. Low flow, medium flow, high flow rates, emitter spacing, drip tube flow rate, drip tube uh, flow rate at eight uh, PSI here, gallons per minute per 100 feet. This is gallons per hour per 100 feet. And the time it takes to apply one inch of water in hours. A lot of times one inch of water per week is considered to be the standard. And as an example, drip tape with a flow rate of 0.45 gallons per minute per 100 feet will take about 5.8 hours to apply one inch of water. So that would be running it for approximately that just under an hour every day would get you to that one inch of water per week. And here again, we see all the options that we have, which is great. Gets a little confusing, but if you kind of go through and determine what drip tape you're purchasing, what your emitter spacing is, this can again give you a very good starting point. Now situation one, because I'm going to walk you through some examples here. Uh, if you have more gallons per minute from the source than is required, if you've got an excessive amount of water, this is Niagara Falls, but I don't have that much water, but if you have seven gallons per minute flow rate and you're running 960 feet of drip tape with a 12 inch emitter spacing and you're choosing to get the high flow drip tape, which is 0.45 gallons per minute per 100 feet drip tape, the time required to apply one inch of water would be 5.8 hours. 
How do we go about calculating this? Well, a drip tape flow requires 4.32 gallons per minute. Again, we have seven. Run drip tape for 50 minutes to deliver 216 gallons. Running this for seven days equals four point of. Uh, 5.8 hours of a run time to match the one inch of water per week recommendation. And I went through that kind of crass, but you can kind of go through and plug in your own numbers and see how they may fit so you can uh, determine exactly how long to run your water for. Again, 50 minutes here times the 4.32 gallons per minute to get you the 216 gallons, which would be about that one inch per week. Now, situation two is that what if you have less gallons per minute than the source requires? If you're a little water short, same seven gallons per minute flow rate, but now we're trying to run 3,000 feet of drip tape. Same emitter spacing, same flow rate. Well, here now we're requiring 13.5 gallons per minute, but remember, stated up here, the source can only supply seven gallons per minute. So there needs to be two zones made with a valve so that 1,500 feet of drip tape runs at one time. Run the drip tape for 50 minutes to deliver 6.75 gallons per minute times 50 minutes would equal 337 gallons. Mm -hmm. Running this for seven days equals the 5.8 hours of runtime to match the one inch of water per week recommendation. So again, here, if we have seven gallons per minute, but we need 13 and a half, simply dividing your area into different zones will allow you to meet those recommendations. And again, this all comes back to calculating your water source. So hopefully if you pause the video, look back at this, this can provide you with some helpful information to go about applying uh, your own flow rates and drip tape to these calculations to ensure your plants are at least starting with one inch per water per week and you can make adjustments from there.